Welcome to 3DA's walkthrough of Castle Hain Disc Golf Course, all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina. We decided to bring in some extra special guests from the Eastern Disc Golf team to take us to the course today. They are some of the most talented disc golfers North Carolina has to offer. Oh, and then there's also myself. No relation. Let's throw it out to Scott to start us off on hole one. Hole one is the best starting hole in North Carolina. It is 386 feet from the long pin, 308 feet from the short. It's a very straight par three. That's gonna require a lot of control. You're gonna to wanna to drag the disc pretty late down the fairway from left to right and have it finish just going straight. If you get across this ditch, you're doing perfect. At first glance, hole two looks like it's one of the easiest holes on the course, but be careful. If you leak your shot a little bit too far to the right, too long, or kick a tree, you might end up out of bounds. And once you're on the green, the hole still isn't over. You must make your putt or else you might end up rolling down the hill, out of bounds taking a big number. Hole three is a 341 foot par three. The tee shot will need to miss the big trees early and move slightly left the entirety of its flight. As the shot finishes, the disc will need to avoid the three to four trees guarding the circle, as well as stay dry and avoid the creek on the right. Hole four is a 419 foot par four dog leg right, and probably has the most daunting gap on the course. Placement is key on this hole. If you land off the fairway on either side, you're probably gonna just try to save par. A forehand or backhand hyzer flip with a late turn can get you into position for an easy three or even a long look at eagle if you get the angle correct. Hole five is one of the few on the course with an actual elevation change. The pin is an uphill 283 foot par three with an OB creek left, which hopefully won't come into play. The hole is more right hand backhand friendly with an Anheuser flex line to reach the pin that plays over 300 with the elevation change. It's a very rewarding birdie, but typically plays par. Hole six is a long par four, the dog leg to the left that plays as one of the most difficult holes in the course. You must land your drive in the center of the fairway if you want to even think about birdie. A little to the left, a little to the right, you're going to be hoping for par at best. From there, bust out an overstable disc, spike that hyzer, and you'll end up on the green for a putt. Hole 7, 355 foot par 3 that probably plays closer to 370. Throw a left to right moving shot and hug the left side of the fairway so that you can land softly on this hill that slopes from left to right down towards an OB ditch. If you get a 2 on this hole, you're most likely gaining strokes on the field. Hole eight at the castle is a 700 foot par five. Get your tee shot up and moving to the left, miss all the trees and land in this flat spot. You can take your second shot and push it straight for 300, 325 feet to leave yourself a nice and easy straight 225 to 250 foot approach into this sloping green. Hole nine is a treat for the lefties with a 207 foot par three with Amanda on the right and OB in the parking lot area. The line of this hole makes a sharp right that finishes towards the pin and has most players throwing a very high Anheuser with glide. So it pans out of the opening of the tree line for your putt. Starting the back nine, hole 10 is a 430 foot par four. Players will need to throw an accurate tee shot off the tee 200 to 300 feet to land soft in the fairway to give themselves a fair up shot that will have to move left or right depending on the basket placement. On the left you'll have an elevated basket and on the right you'll have one tree in your way. Hole 11 is a 472 foot par four. There are two right side OB areas which include the roadway and beyond and a rope line along the second shot on the right hand side of the woods which leads all the way to the green. The key to this hole is the first shot by hitting a grass fairway about 20 feet off the tree line, then attacking the pin with a right hand backhand or a lefty forehand for your putt for three. Famous hole 12 is a 500 foot par five. 
Tee shots need to be around 180 feet, landing softly to avoid the water in the ditch. As the train roars past on your left, you will need to throw a thread the needle shot down this narrow 300 foot fairway. The disc will have to hazard right to get to the green that's on the right side where you'll tap in your birdie or eagle if you're lucky. Hole 13 is a short par three that's one of the tightest holes on the course. With woods on your left and right, there's a tight gap in the middle that you've got to hit. Forehand, backhand, or overhand, just do whatever it takes to get on the green or else you'll be left scrambling. Hole 14 is a 330 foot par 3, where you'll have to navigate a sharp right turn to approach the basket. A strong forehand is probably required to round the corner on your first shot, either in the air or using a big skip. From the backhand perspective, throwing a mid or putter to the opening for a long circle 2 putt or easy approach for par is probably the best idea for hole 14. Hole 15 is a 498 foot par 4. It moves from left to right with thick rough on both sides of the fairway. Throw a high forehand or a floaty backhand ante that will get you in position to approach this blind basket tucked back around the corner in a cove of trees. Hole 16 is North Carolina disc golf through and through. A 248 foot par three. It's not a long way to the basket, but you're forced to pick a gap off the tee. And even if you hit one of those gaps, there's plenty of other trees to contend with along the way. In practice, I went with a backhand with the mid range along the left gap. Hole 17 is all about placement on the first shot. At 480 feet, this par four is manageable when it comes to distance. It's important to choose a disc that will stay straight long enough to reach the opening, but also fades at the end of the flight to open up the angle to the pin. Hit the landing zone, and you are well on your way to carding a well-deserved late-round birdie. Hole 18 is one of the better finishing holes out there. It's a really tough 388-foot par 3 that moves left to right. It's way further right than you expect it, and it's blind from the tee. Don't push it too straight, or you'll end up in a lot of trouble. And that concludes Castle Hain. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and in the comments, let us know what course we should cover next. Until next time, take it easy, guys. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to like. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>